Hi everyone, this is Erin from Sandpaper Road and today I'm going to show you how I made this card. I cannot even begin to explain to you how much fun this was. This was total playtime for me. Um, I used all kinds of things I hadn't used in a while. I just felt like making a card and look how nice it is. No relationship is all sun sh sunshine but two people can share one umbrella and survive the storm together. Isn't that fantastic? And when you open it up, it's a pop-up card <clears throat> that says I'm here for you, rain or shine. I am, I, I just, I don't know, I've been on this little kick, this little card making kick lately. So um, just wanted to share with you how to make this card. And so we're gonna use some uh, Technique Junkie stamps. We're gonna use some of this eyes ink ice um, glaze and this stencil from Technique Junkies. This stamp and this stamp, little glitter. Now to do the pop-up, I'm using a die set and that is from Creek Bank Creations. So actually, I'm just gonna get started right away. Now I'm gonna keep the card, the finished card handy. Um, and let, yeah, let's just get started right away. Because what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do this these raindrops first. Because this uh, takes a little while to dry. So let's get that set up. And then um, while that's drying, we'll make the card mechanism, the die. <clears throat> so I'm going to use my stamping platform. And let's see, I have some good cardstock for stamping. This is a Bristol Smooth cardstock. Um, you can use whatever you like. I actually have not been using that for very long. I just used some cheapy, just whatever cheapy cardstock I wanted, and that has worked well for years for me. But I wanted to sort of up my game a little bit. I'm actually going through, I think, a little upgrade, upgrade phase in my life. You know, I've been using the same heat gun for it feels like a hundred years and just all the same stuff for a really long time so just slowly trying to give myself some upgrades <clears throat> okay so let's see first we're going to stamp um, this is the survive together stamp from technique junkies so we're going to start with that on my stamping platform just anywhere Okay, and I'm going to use um, some Distress Oxide ink only because I really like the way that it stamps. This is black soot. You can use whatever uh, black ink you have on hand. I'm not doing anything fancy. Um, of course, you don't need a stamping platform. I just really find it... Uh, really, really, really handy. And I'm just inking it up real good. Where is my, where is my cloth? Oh, here it is. And I'm just gonna rub that in. Some people use a tool to do that, that's fine. I don't have that tool. So, not because I don't want it, I just don't, I, I don't know. It's just not my, I don't know. I don't know why I don't have that tool. Actually, yes, I do. I tend to not buy things when they write come out, <laughs> like as soon as they come out. I don't know, I'm kind of a weirdo, I think that way, but some people like jump and buy the thing as soon as it comes out. I don't really do that. I'm, I guess I'm sort of cynical that way, but I sort of give it like, a year <laughs> or two because I think to myself whatever issues come up with it or whatever you know I can't tell sometimes if something's a fad thing I'm not saying this about that tool okay just in in general and you know where it started if if anybody is um, old enough in the crafting world to remember remember the slice remember when the slice came out it was all like before the cricket and all that stuff remember that Man, I wanted a slice so bad. I wanted it. It was expensive too. That was like the most expensive thing they had at, at the like on the market. It was like $150. <laughs> Funny now, isn't it? Well, anyway, I just decided I am Now, what did I do with that little paper? 
What did I do with it? Oh, it fell down. Well, anyway, I just did not get it for myself. I was just determined just to wait. I was like, let me just wait. Let me just literally wait like a year. And I sure did. I think I waited more than that. And lo and behold, no more slice. So. Okay, so we're done with that stamp. Um, there will be links in the description box, by the way, if you're interested in getting any of these stamps. And just for watching this video, you can use my coupon code, which is tj 10 Aaron, and you can save 10% on your order at Technique Junkies. That's just a little, a little extra nugget for you, okay? Now, I am gonna hit this with my heat gun real quick um, because I did use the oxide ink. Whoops. So um, it's probably gonna stay wet just a little bit longer. I could even see it wet right there. You know what I was just thinking? Before I go any further, you know I was just thinking, I'm not gonna redo it now, but you see how it's kind of runny? My oxide ink is really, really juicy. So I almost think that because of this white writing in the middle there, and even on this, well, this one I didn't stamp it twice. I only stamped it like once. Do you see that? And then this, I did you see me double stamp it again, ink and double stamp? So, um, but right there, I almost wonder if maybe I should have used an archival ink just to get like a little crispier image with the writing, not with the outline, but with the writing. So it's up to you. Give it a couple times, you know, try try a couple different inks and see which one you like the best. Um, but if you're, you, you know, maybe just hit it with a heat gun. All right, so we're going to put this off to the side and I'm gonna keep it moving. I'm not gonna show you another round of inking, another option, because you can certainly try that on your own. But what I am gonna do is, this step here now this is the rain stencil and <clears throat> i'm actually going to just put it now this i did on an angle and i really like that actually how did i do that oh i know i just put it right on top of the umbrella like that do you see that let me see maybe i can zoom in a little bit here my fingers okay all right so I just put the umbrella the top of the umbrella on the top of the umbrella and lined up the there's even this little thing right here on the top of the umbrella so I just lined that right up on the top of the umbrella that's all I did for placement I also off camera and beforehand put a little bit of pixie spray on the back of the stencil let me get that a little bit better sorry about the shake there um, and that's going to help hold that in place um, on the back um, it comes in these little uh, spout things I'm going to put some right on my craft mat okay I've done this already once so I know I'm going to need a little bit more than I think I am all right and now I have some make sure you can still see what's going on okay now I have some of this glitter that I just had in my stash and I'm just going to pour some uh, with it and this is gonna do two things it's gonna make it shiny which I like and also well it's shiny without the glitter but it's gonna make it glitzy that's what I'm trying to say but it's also gonna thicken it up just a tad that is what I want from something that goes through a stencil. All right. Now, I don't want to get any in the umbrella. That can be a little bit tricky. And because I'm right-handed, I don't want to do this side first because then I'm going to have to lean on it to do this side. All right. So let me go this way. I'm going to start at the bottom. Um, and uh, I already know that what I'm going to be doing ah, is cutting out a circle. So uh, that's helpful to me to know what the end result is going to be. All right. And I'm going to slide the excess off here. I think I got a little bit inside of the umbrella, which is a little bit annoying. Hopefully I can take that off when I get this off. I should have resprayed this with the pixie spray because it's not sticking 
as well as it did the other times that I did this. Maybe I'm just nervous because of the pressure of being on camera. Okay. Now, if you mess up, um, just do it again. There's, I'm not gonna, this is just me talking. I personally am not gonna get too stressed out if I mess up because I have much more paper and it's a stamp and I have plenty of ink and it didn't take me that long to stamp in the first place. So if you mess up, just try it again. No big deal. Okay. And that is pretty much that. I do have my towel handy. And let's see what we got here. That's not as good as my other one at all. Let me see if I can get this off. I can't get it off too well, but that's okay because I'll go in with a, it's like right in this weird spot too, but that's okay. When it dries, I'll go in with a little bit of like a white pen or something or I'll put an embellishment over it. All right. This isn't really enough to save this little bit, so I will just wipe it. Now I'm going to take a second here and go and wash this off of my stencil. Okay, uh, this is going to be set aside to dry, and I feel bad that this one is kind of, I don't think it looks nearly as good as my other one. So possibly if I feel like it off camera, I'll do it again. I don't know. I might just see what kind of time I have, but I'll still keep going just for uh, this sake. Now this is still all wet. So I'm trying to be careful, and if I was a smart person, I would have done this ahead of time. But I want to cut off this excess here, and now I'll set this aside to dry. But what I would really want to do is use this other piece to stamp my uh, sentiment that's going to go inside. You can choose any one you want. This has, what is this, six sentiments? One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. You could even do the without rain, no rainbows one. Maybe I'll without, it doesn't really matter if it's upside down or not, does it? Okay, this time I will use an archival ink. This is just that black archival ink that I had. Just my hand, yeah. I might go back and do that again but on the people. That looks good. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, I am not going to clean this stamp at the moment because I kind of want to keep moving. So I'll just put my cloth in here and keep moving. Okay. All right. Put my ink back. Let me hit this with a heat gun just quick before I die cut. I've done that a hundred times. All right, I have the same Sizzix uh, Big Shot that I've had forever. Let's see what we like here. That just seems like a lot of extra. Oh, this one doesn't have a stitch on it. Hold on, let me see if I have one. I thought I had one this size with a stitch. Yeah, I do. Okay, let me see here. Hmm. I don't know. I think I might like the bigger one. How does it look with that big one? Uh, I think it looks kind of good. I'm just going to, I think I'm going to stick with what I had originally. I don't know. There's something about just cutting it so close to the sentiment. I don't know that I want to do that. That looks pretty good. We'll do that. Okay. <clears throat> These um, dies actually are also from Creek Bank Creations. Like the, oh, all the dies today are from Creek Bank Creations. Huh. What do you know? They make really good dies. I like, I like them. I use them pretty often. <clears throat> and lo and behold, 
what got on my, oh, so many problems. Look at, see how I got that ink right there? I should have let it dry longer. I think you're going to see a, a, a different version here. This doesn't look as good on camera. It really doesn't. I should have, I was there drying it with the heat gun and I didn't dry it long enough. So do you see what happened when I put the, you know what, I'm just going to leave the mistakes in because this one I took my time on and didn't do the mistakes. So now you can see uh, what happens. Dry it even with the archival ink, dry it a little longer or let it sit a little longer. Don't just jump from one step to the other like I'm doing here on camera. Instead, take some time, walk away from it or do another project or dry it a little longer because, um, yeah, there was no reason why I had to cut that out right then and there. I could have just let it sit. Ugh, dang it. Oh well. This die is to mark the card. And you put the notch, there, see that notch? You put the big part of the card where the writing's gonna be or the sentiment's gonna be or the opening of the card's gonna be, all right? Just like so. And you run it through. And this is all that it's gonna do. <laughs> Can you see that? But this, uh, what you're gonna end up doing is folding these tabs down. Like so. You can use wet glue, but, oops, I almost did that too soon. Yeah, wet glue, I don't know. You're gonna be, you're gonna be holding it for a really long time waiting for it to dry, so. It's up to you. I don't want to do that. Okay, now fold on the other score lines. All right, and you're going to make this little box. See where I put the tape on the tabs? That's how it's going to be, but it's going to be taped down to the card. All right, so you see what we did? That's how that goes, and then that's how that goes. You fold that like that. This piece is has this little tiny notch on top and you just fold this here like that. And this is gonna glue, see this little tiny notch right there? You fold that and it's gonna glue right on, right up against that line like this, right up against the line. So this little line that's there, once that's folded down, imagine it's folded down to a box so you could see the line. This line right here, it goes right up against it, against that line, you tape it there. Remember, this was how this looked when we did it on the card, okay? The notch was right in the seam and it cut lines here. Let me get a pointer thing. And then it scored lines here, okay? See the score lines? So we're going to be taping this down right in between the score lines. It gives you a little guide. Okay, and that's it. I just glued it right down like so, and it's sticking up the card like that, and it's right lined up with the two score lines, and it looks like a little box, okay? Now I thread this right through like this. Bring it back up the other side, like this. Whoops, okay. And back down the other side, like this. Now, once I've got that real nice, then I lay this flat. I'm gonna score it real good push it down real good. And I'm gonna close the card. And pull this, crease this. Now I gotta tape that down. So I just add just a little bit of tape like that. Now before I do though, you know, there this is gonna have a lot of action here. So I am just going to, this is just the scrap piece of paper and it's gonna get covered up anyway. 
So I'm just gonna, I could glue or tape, it doesn't matter, I just had this right here. Right up against it, just to sort of reinforce and give it a little bit of strength, because that's gonna get a lot of, um, a lot of action, I really don't want it to tear. And now I can take this piece of tape off and tape it down in the front. And when I open it, that box pops up. That's what creates the pop-up. And now what we'll do is stick this on top. I really don't like this with these smears. And I'm sort of a little bit of a perfectionist just because I know this is, I mean, it is for a demo. And yeah, I said I was gonna leave it, but guess what, I'm not, so. Hold on, let me come right back after I redo that and then I'll show you what's next. Okay, so I did go ahead and redo this. Um, it probably doesn't look that different to you, but it does to me, so I'm happy I did it. And I'm going, we're gonna put this right here to create the um, pop-up, okay? Now, here's what you have to be mindful of is when the card closes, like if I just put this right in the center like that, we'll watch when the card closes, um, I want to make sure that it doesn't hang outside of the edge of the card, okay? I'm going to have to work this a little bit here. Okay. Now you can use glue or you can use um, score tape or whatever adhesive you want. I used to use score tape, but it was a little bit too hard be for me because then I didn't have the wiggle room I wanted. Um, I mean, I used to use score tape for this, for this step, but now I uh, don't. So I'm gonna do it just a little bit right of center, just a hair. Did I do it on this one? Okay, good. Just a little bit, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, a little bit left of center. A little bit left of center. Make sure that I, when it closes, I don't see, see that? See that? That's what I was afraid of. Now I'm gonna hold my finger on the bottom here and I'm gonna slide it over just a bit and try to close it again. There we go. All right, now I can straighten it out. There we go. Very, very good. See how that is? We don't want it to stick out. And I'm gonna turn the card over and burnish that down instead of trying to press it on the inside. That's gonna be pretty secure. Very, very good, secure, good. All right, before I get too detailed on the back, I'm gonna put my stamp on the back. Cause sometimes like I'll forget and then I'll have all these embellishments and it's really hard to stamp after the fact. So I'm gonna do that. Really good and handy if you sell your cards. I Or even if you give them away, it's always nice to have a little handmade buy. All right, so we're done with the inside of the card for now. Next, we're gonna create this cool rainbow looking background and we're going to use, what did I use for that? Oh, I know what, I used another piece of that cardstock. Okay, and I use this. This is the Butterfly Flourish Collage Stamp. This might've been from the uh, July or August new release and we're going to use some clear embossing powder we're going to emboss it clear okay then we're going to have this nice clear emboss over top and then we're going to spray ink around it and it's going to give that really good resist so this is a bit of a process um, let's get this back out here All right, now we've got this. I'm really gonna need to push this down. Move my finished card out of the way. Now, whatever you use for embossing is fine in terms of ink. I usually use a Versamark ink. Um, other inks are good for embossing. Just do whatever you normally do. Today, for me, I'm gonna use this dauber. This is an enamel and embossing dauber, and it's by Sweet Stamps and Piccolo. I 
have a secret love affair with this stuff because it in particular for background stamps if I'm just gonna use, you see me use Versamark all the time for my stamps and embossing and stuff and that's that's my sort of my go-to but when it comes to bigger stamps this this is it especially if you want this this look this is the look it almost have you ever double embossed before if you've ever double embossed that's what it does in a single emboss I can see some of the comments now before they even get there what is double embossing double embossing is like when you uh, let's say you're using Versamark for example and you put Versamark over your whole stamp and then you put the powder down the embossing powder on top of your stamped image you heat it up when you're done while the powder is still hot you know how it's hot and sticky if you if you touch it right after you've heat embossed it you're like ooh, I touched it too soon while it's hot and sticky you pour embossing powder over it again and then you heat it again a second time so thus the name double embossing you can do that with a same color embossing powder or a different color and it really creates a neat effect but the cool thing is is that this stuff creates that same effect but just with one one set of embossing so it's really really juicy it's really juicy and it's really good for like if you have wood embellishments wood words you want to emboss with embossing powder I'm gonna do a video on that actually but um, it's really good for that This comes out really, really juicy. I can see I missed a little bit. I think it's partially my table. I think my table has some imperfections. So sometimes I just turn and stamp it in. Sometimes that actually does the trick <laughs> instead of re-inking. Yeah, I can see I got it almost all. As a matter of fact, I think I got it all. Yep almost oh yeah that's good this is so perfect for this unfortunately because we're doing clear on white um, pretty tough to see so where is my um, KFC coleslaw containers are very good storage for embossing powder I do not use fancy containers I do not spend money on fancy containers that's just me you do you do you that is not just that's just me but between my teenage sons and my husband I feel like I live in a fraternity house so we always have <laughs> enough pizza boxes for scrap cardboard and we have uh, enough KFC containers for little little things and yeah. okay now I realize that you cannot really see that I'm trying to tip this up here so you get at least some sense of the fact that this is clear embossed there's little tiny specks on there I think I have some gunk in my embossing powder but I am NOT that worried about that because I'm going to be spraying and I've got some shimmering bliss sprays and these are by technique junkies I've got imperial yellow dolphin cove and dragon's blood I love them really neat mica uh, type shimmer sprays and um, what I you know what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna start with the lightest color why don't I do that the lightest color and um, I'm going to do three times on the image somewhere. What happened to my cloth? <clears throat> Can you see that? There we go. 
wipe off my nozzle. Now let me do the blue after that. Now I have to be mindful, A, of the color choices that I chose, and B, of the order that I do this in. Because if I would put, if I would do red next, that would look really good. Um, but it would give me a, a more orange tone because it would blend with the yellow. I don't think I want that to be more orangey because remember I'm doing raindrops. So I got a bunch of ink on it somehow. So <clears throat> if I do blue second, then it's gonna make some green and that's gonna go good with the rain. Okay. You'll see what I mean here. Okay. Still leaving room for the red, but see how I'm getting these green things where they would be orange otherwise. And now in the remaining spots, I'll still get some of that, a little bit of orange, but um, yeah, that looks really good. So I'm just gonna let that sit for a bit, put these back, oopsie, <coughs> sort of tidy up a bit, okay? See that it does its thing. Yep, that looks pretty good. Now this is gonna take some time to dry as well. You can mop up the excess with a kitchen towel roll or like a, like a paper towel roll, or you can let it sit, or you can hang it up with a clip to dry, or you can, uh, I don't really, really recommend the heat set method because you've got all this embossing powder on here. Um, that's gonna be a problem. So let's do this here. You could use other paper. Now I'm just gonna get up the big drips. <clears throat> I tried to mop it up with other paper and when I first did it, and it didn't, this is what I got with the mop up. It wasn't really too much, so. But I am gonna do a good rub and that's gonna get the ink off of the embossed image. Okay, I'm just rubbing and because I've embossed this already, I'm rubbing the ink off of the white, or the clear embossed image there, and there it is. Yep, there it is, looks good. Now this is uh, gonna have to dry, and this is gonna have to dry over here. This, these two things are gonna have to dry. So uh, with that being said, I'm gonna wait patiently let them dry um, if I want them to dry if I want this to dry flat then what I might do is maybe turn it upside down on my craft mat and put like a heavy object over top to keep it flat um, this I'm gonna have to leave still so that it dries with the embossed rain and um, then I'll come back to you when they're dry okay um, we are all dry, everything is dry. It actually has only been a few hours. I thought I was gonna have to wait overnight, but I will tell you that I could not help myself. I went back and I redid the stamping and the um, rain stencil, and I am pleasantly surprised. First of all, this is the one I did on camera, okay? And it, I still would have gone for it. I just know I could do better than that. And sometimes the pressure of being on camera sort of, you know, makes me rush or whatever. So once I had the camera off, then I went back. Now I added a little bit more glitter to the gel. Then in, this was the first one. Okay. And then this was the second one. So I did add a little bit more glitter. I like the little bit more glitter. Second of all, I was a little bit more careful. <laughs> And third, look at the stamped image. Um, I'll do it this way. You could see um, this one, the redo, I did use archival ink and this one I used um, the oxide ink. This was the original one. Let me show you how it uh, was stamped. Okay, right there you can see. And then um, compare that to the archival ink, which definitely 
uh, let the text be a little bit crispier. I really, really like that. Also, now what just happened to my stencil? Oh, you know where it is? It's in the kitchen because I washed it off. I did before I did the redo, I did do a fresh coat of the Pixie Spray on the stencil, which made a huge difference um, in keeping it secure. Here's why I find that that's important. Um, <clears throat> these spots right here, 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 all these little partial things, this won't matter as much because honestly, we're, really, we're just trying to get a, a circle image. But look, like here, this was gonna be in it. These things really bothered me a lot and this right here, this part was the, probably the part that bothered me the most. Um, and just the, the raindrops weren't just as crispy as this. And you can see what a difference that Pixie Spray really makes to hold down your stencil. So now we're gonna be able to cut this out and look at that, that is gonna be just tremendous. And I'm going to go, the, um, the stamp is such that I can cut just right along the edge of it. And it should fit pretty perfectly right onto the, as a matter of fact, I'm just inside the stamped image, just a hair, see? See how I cut off just a hair? I mean, a hair, it's not even, it's not even a measurement. I mean, a hair is about it. Okay, very nice. A hair, I say. Oops. Okay, this will go right here. Very nice. And it will cover up that front. That First of all, that looks beautiful just as it is. Now, I do wanna say that we do not want adhesive over this part. It doesn't matter if it's over the, this part, but we, we can't have a sticky thing over this, this cut out right here. So we're just gonna have to be mindful, no tape over, over that part with your thumb. Okay. I have a tendency to just pull it toward me like I'm the only one watching at my crafting table. All right, that looks really good. Now, I have, uh, that's kind of a big gap there though, honestly. It'll be all right. Now I have here just a plain card panel. Um, there we go. That I'm going to put inside here on the inside and only because I got a little bit of smudge right here on the inside of the card. But again, I don't want to go past this little slit. So off camera, I pre-cut that. We're going to make sure we don't put the card panel over top. So I did trim it down just a little bit. But it gives a nice little polished look to the, um, to the card there. Just makes it look a little nice. See how that is? I like that look. Okay, next we're gonna put the circle on top. Nothing, nothing too major. Okay, and I'll just use some score tape for that. Or you can use some liquid glue which, or a combination, whichever you like. Make sure it's centered. Now you might be thinking, why in the world go to all that trouble to stamp that lovely thing just to cover it up? Well, it's, I, I don't really have anything to say that's going to make it seem like it's going to make sense. <laughs> it's just, it looks so pretty, that outer edge, you, you can't necessarily, you could necessarily not do it or do it, but I think because I've done mixed media also, that you just kind of get in that layering effect and you don't really you don't really think twice about it anymore. All right, now let's say I want that right here. That's gonna look really good. But now I have this brad and I've already stuck this down. 
don't even try to pull this up. You're going to make yourself miserable. You can, but honestly, I keep these nearby. These are just wire clippers or wire snips or whatever. Oops. And I just snip this off. I hold this over the trash can. I just snip it off. And like, that's how easy it comes off. I just did it right in the palm of my hand. And then you just throw that in the trash. And now you can hot glue that right down like so. So if it's too late, it, and you'll notice they were just within my reach because sometimes I think of this kind of stuff like after the fact completely. And uh, I'm like, ah, oh. I think what I'm gonna do is wait a second and do the inside. Cause what did I do? I did something cool on the inside of this one. Oh yeah. I used this strip that was left over and I just put it right across. Yeah, use this and put it right across. See how I can, see how I can do that? Just right across like this. I'll do like that, a little extra. And then will this fit across? Oh, yes. Oh, I'm so happy about that. Okay, let me get my, that has worked out perfectly because we can see this band right across the middle and um, this is gonna camouflage it and make, a, make it look a little bit more natural like we meant to do that. Okay. And let's see, how do I, oops. Ah. Okay, we'll go like this. Now I'm pushing this up against the side of that little uh, that little part right there, see how I did? I let it hang off the edge, and now I can turn this over and snip this off, and it will be perfectly sized against the end. That looks great. Without rain, no rainbows. I love it. I love that. No, this scrap here, because I like the way this looks. And I'll just create my own, because that's kind of a cool little pattern there by itself. And I'll just fishtail this end because like I said, I really like that look. And, oh boy. Urk. Oh. And the brad, and you will never know that that took me so much effort. Okay. Yep, right there like that. You know, if I really wanted to, do I have an ink? What I could do is um, ink the edges of that little banner thing. I, I'm, yeah, I think that'll make it look good. My art area is behind the couch in our living room. It's really relatively small but it's big enough for me. And um, I like that. I like the location more than anything else because um, when the family is all here and we're just kind of all hanging out, watching TV, whatever, I can be back here and it's really, really, really fun, enjoyable. So don't ever trip out or get stressed out about your tiny craft space. That looks good. See, we just made our own. Looks just fine. DIY at, at its best.